So IUC or the Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission is, uh, is a body within UNESCO. It, has, uh, it was established in 1960 and it has uh, since uh, I think eight, uh, 87, it has functional autonomy. It means uh, it has its own member states. And uh, so UNESCO has, has its member states, 195, but IUC has its own member states, which is 148 at the moment. Um, we are the, within the UN wide system. We are the focal point for ocean science, ocean observations and services, data information exchange and capacity building. And our vision is a strong scientific understanding and systematic observations of the changing world ocean climate and ecosystems shall underpin sustainable development and global governance for healthy ocean and global regional and national management of risks and opportunities from the ocean. So it's really, the, the basic is really ocean science and ocean observations to inform po uh, policy. Um, headquarters is in Paris with UNESCO, but we have a number of sub-commissions. We have a commission for uh, the Caribbean uh, Sea, we have one for Africa, we have one for the West, Western Pacific. And they have uh, uh, offices there. We also have a number of decentralized IUC offices, of which this office is one of them, which is uh, the office for IUDE. Um, briefly, what is IUC doing? We uh, define our uh, uh, activities in six functions. And the basis is ocean research, ocean science, and, and observation and data management. So building scientific knowledge and then applying that knowledge for early warning and services, for assessments and information for policy, and in the end for improving governance, so sustainable management and governance. And in between, we have capacity building. Make sure that all member states in the world can participate in global programs led by IUC. So and this is just a number of the logos of all the programs and projects uh, that, that we are doing. Although we're not a big, uh, Secretariat, I think we have about 40 people uh, to run. Uh, also, not only in Paris, but in, at all the offices together. Um, IUD is the oldest program within IUC. It stands for International Oceanographic Data and Information Exchange, it's established one year after IUC, and is uh, meant to, uh, to build a comprehensive integrated ocean data information system, serving the broad and diverse needs of IUC member states for routine and scientific use. And these are a number of the uh, IUD projects, such as Ocean Teacher, Ocean Data Portal, uh, OBIS, uh, HEDAT for harmful algal blooms, uh, GTSPP for sea surface temperature, etc. So the office here was established in uh, 2005, um, thanks to uh, the generous support of the Flemish government, who is donating three staff people to the office and, uh, and, and uh, some operational budgets for organizing training courses and meetings, for expert meetings. So the, the IUD committee is composed of the national uh, managers for, of the data centers and, and, and the information centers, mostly the marine libraries. And they meet every two years to discuss the program and, and the work plan of IUD and all its expert groups. Then OBIS, OBIS, the Ocean Biogeographic Information System, is a global data sharing and clearinghouse for marine biodiversity data. At the moment, we have 47 million uh, species occurrences of 120,000 marine species, which is contributed by nearly 600 institutions. Um, we, we at the office, uh, uh, we are very small. It's only myself and Peter Provost, our data manager. But actually, most of the work is done by the OBIS nodes. So we have about 20 nodes, and they do all the networking with the data providers. They do the data processing, quality control. They put it on a server so we can harvest the data every three months and, and build the, the integrated database and do all the indexing for the portal. So basically, we have the data providers collecting the data. Uh, then we have the OBIS nodes. Uh, do the uh, data assembly, quality control, and we harvest and we build the tools and the, and the products. And in the middle, capacity development, things that we're doing uh, now, we do one training course every year uh, for our community. Uh, we did an analysis on based on the publications that are citing OBIS. There are about 1,000 
bit more than 1,000 papers, but more than 500 we could find back in the web of science. And then we looked at the affiliations of, the, of all the co-authors and see how they were co-authoring the same paper. And then you can see it's, it's, it's very nice. You can see people from the US, Europe, Australia working together on similar papers. But also from the South, uh, there's also South and North uh, collaboration but all, and, and South and South although that can still be increased. But it's a nice overview of how people are actually uh, using OBIS, having an open access database can actually increase uh, and enhance international cooperation. Um, the, C the CBD, the Convention on Biological Diversity, the Conference of the Parties, uh, the parties that have signed the CBD, they have also asked uh, OBIS to support one of their processes, which is the identification of EPSAS ecologically or biologically significant areas. Uh, so they are organizing regional workshops and they are using data uh, from OBIS and other sources to define the most important uh, biological and ecological areas. These are not MPAs, marine protected areas, but they can inform uh, the process that is happening at the moment and uh, under the UNCLOS to, uh, to build a global network of MPAs in the, in the high seas and, and the area. Supporting uh, global assessments, uh, such as the World Ocean Assessment under the uh, UN, uh, OBIS data was used in a number of chapters there. Our new portal, which we released, I think we better released in June and then uh, went into production in, in August, uh, is in, uh, uh, I hope you've all visited the website and it's, uh, it's now it's a more easy way to access, to see what's in OBIS for particular regions and for, for taxa. So when you have lots of data, for example, for the Atlantic herring, you, you might see, I don't know, I mean, it's the trends of the data, I don't know if it's real, but for example, Atlantic herring um, didn't, was not observed before 2000 in the you know, more northern uh, areas of the Arctic. So you can try to find trends in species uh, movement. So, as I said, we have 47 million uh, records. Um, for ABNJ, for Areas Beyond National Jurisdiction, uh, that's about 7%. Uh, so three, about 3 million uh, records, about 600 data sets, 225 institutions that, support, that provided data from ABNJ. About 3,500 species are only observed in uh, ABNJ. So these are all the locations, sampling locations, but about 18 million uh, records in OBIS do not have depth information. Uh, but once you go uh, below 200 meters, we only have 3.2 million uh, records. Uh, below 1,000 meters, we have 600,000. Below 4,000 meters, only 25,000 records. Um, so OBIS started under the Sense of Marine Life in 2000. And it really focused on species occurrences, mostly species presence. And if we were lucky, we'll also get abundance data. Um, that's becoming uh, quite limited these days because biologists, when they go sampling, they take a lot more than just uh, species data. They also take temperature, salinity, uh, biometric measurements, uh, images, and Mostly that was a problem because serving, then, serving data to OBIS was like something in addition they had to do. They had to send a subset of their entire database to OBIS and so what's happening with, with, with all the other data. So the data got split um, and then it's difficult to, to merge the data again. Um, also, most, so lots of people didn't regard OBIS really as a data sharing platform within their community or within their community of practice or projects because it was only a subset of their data. So we, we recognized the problem and uh, we started a pilot project called OBIS Env Data. It's extending OBIS beyond species occurrences to include environmental data. And uh, so, we def so we defined a schema to handle additional data types in OBIS beyond just species occurrences. So this is a classical example of you have a cruise, you've, you have one station visit, and in that station you take different samples. You have a Van, van, Green, van Wiengrab, a multicorer, a beam trawler, uh, you have a CTD. And so for every sample 
you should link to the occurrences to that sample and you should link the, all the abiotic measurements to your sample. Uh, we had to define a, a format to handle the, this kind of structure with li limitations that we have with Dar using Darwin Core and the IPT for publishing data. Uh, you will all learn this week uh, what this means. This is actually uh, the way how we're going to deal with OBIS is you will, you will have, we will have three f different files. You will have a, a file for events, the event core. You will have a file for the species occurrences and you will have a file for all the measurements of facts related to the sampling event. A, a new development is a collaboration that we're doing with GeoBond, the group on, on Earth observations. And, and within that group, there is the MBON, the Marine Biodiversity Observation Network, as well as with GOOSE, the Global Ocean Observing System, which has a biology and ecosystems panel. And together uh, with OBIS, together with these three, we are uh, building a partnership to, uh, to, to bring biology within the Global Ocean Observing System, or GOOSE. And the GOOSE framework is really looking at what are the requirements for, for observations, doing the observations, the process, and then building the data and products, the information the indicators that inform the re requirements for observations. So GOOSE is developing uh, the EOVs, the essential ocean uh, variables, and within that panel we are developing what are the biology, well, biological and ecosystem variables, and bringing that into the, the, the routine observations uh, uh, that are happening through the regional uh, GOOSE alliances and the observing platforms. Then you have MBON within GeoBond, they are defining the EBVs, the essential biodiversity variables, uh, but they are more research and development focused and they will try to help bring new uh, EOVs, new technologies from concept to pilot phase in, the, in terms of observations and establishing of national and, and regional bonds. Um, and then OBIS, we are uh, the data system uh, that serve that process to, uh, to harmonize the data and to build uh, tools for data exploration, building products and information assessments. There's a bit of a global context of uh, how OBIS fits in uh, different uh, processes. As I mentioned, capacity development is important for us. Uh, we did last year, we did a training, uh, a training course for 16 people from 14 countries. Lots of developing countries uh, were here. Uh, but this time, this year, the OBIS steering group asked us to focus on the deep sea. Um, uh, so, that's, uh, so that's why we organized uh, also this workshop. And we do this in partnership with the Ocean Teacher Global Academy, which is also a project under IUDE. It started in 2009. Uh, it was focused mostly on data information management. And we, they built up uh, the, the online learning management system based on Moodle, which is an open source software. Where the, you can go to the website and there you'll find uh, all the presentations that during our training courses are available. We will also put all the, all the videos uh, on our YouTube channel. So it's a mixed model of online training and face-to-face -face, uh, trainings. So uh, we did 15 training courses here, but 40, 45 training courses in total. Um, but we, we recognized uh, that doing training courses only here in Ostend uh, was quite limited. Um, you can only train a few hundred people per year. Um, People coming from all places in the world, you will, some of you will uh, certainly are very much jet lagged. And uh, so it's very difficult uh, to follow training course for the entire week. Um, because we were limited in uh, teaching in, in English only. So we decided to build a global uh, uh, Ocean Teacher Academy and uh, with regional training centers using the same online system, uh, the Moodle system of Ocean Teacher. And, but they can use local languages and, uh, and local use cases and local uh, trainers. So this office be sort of becomes a train the trainers office and then the people go back to their regional training centers and give the same courses to the local people. Uh, video conferencing, so this was an example where we had a training course in Kenya, uh, but the lecturer from the US gave the one theory course during video conferencing. 
we have um, we can organize simultaneous trainings at different regional training centers. So we had a training course here and one in, in, uh, at our office in a regional office in India. So in the um, in the afternoon in India and in the morning here, the the theory was done, and then the, the practical courses here were in the afternoon and the morning in India. So the same teacher could train uh, the same simultaneously at different places. So everything is on the Ocean Teacher website. The videos will be posted on YouTube, and um, and that's it. <laughs>